It doesn't take a genius to figure out the tech job market is screwed right now. I could waste time giving you all the statistics, but this video is about giving you solutions, not whining about problems, valid as they may be. Even if the market is tough, it is still extremely possible to land a job. And that's exactly what I did at the beginning of this year. And I did it by using my unfair advantages. Unfair advantages that you yourself can have by the end of this video. But I don't want to be late for work, so I have to tell you those advantages on the way to work. Getting a job in 2024 isn't always super straightforward, and it's not like I got the first job that I applied for. I've been completely ghosted by recruiters just like you, but at the end of 2023, there was this one job I saw that I knew I'd be a great candidate for because there was something special about it. Something that I think you should be thinking about when you're applying for jobs. This job was looking for somebody at the intersection of sports and marketing. And guess what? The niche of my undergrad was sports science, and on top of that, my last data science job was in the marketing domain. So I was right in the sweet spot of this Venn diagram. This is the first advantage that you have, no matter who you are or your past experiences, you yourself have domain knowledge that other candidates just do not. Whether it's based off a hobby that you do in your spare time or it can be the domain of your old job. If you worked in retail, for example, if Primark or some other clothes store needed a data scientist, just because you have some level of experience within their industry, paired with your data skills already increases your odds of standing out. So I hit apply, but it's never that simple, is it? Because I ran into the same problem that so many of you will experience in 2024. Over a hundred other people had applied to this job. So beyond domain, what's another unfair advantage that I had that you can use too to stand out when there's so many applicants? The weather's actually good for once. So once I applied for this job and saw that a hundred other people had done the exact same thing, I sort of forgot that I'd applied entirely. And later on during the week, I saw that a different recruitment company had posted that exact same job. So obviously that meant I didn't get it if they had to repost it. And not gonna lie, for the first time, I was actually having doubts in my ability. Like what was I doing wrong? And why wasn't I hearing anything back? So to drown my sorrows, I went to this regular data science meetup that we have in the city, just to get out of the house and be able to talk to other data people really. And then I ran into this one guy, let's call him Bob. And he was like, Nash, I saw your CV, it's really good. And I was like, where did Bob see my CV? And then I remembered that he worked at Recruiters R Us, which is the recruitment company that I had applied through. And Bob says, I can't guarantee anything, but I'm gonna vouch for you and make sure that your CV is at least seen by the hiring manager. And this is why networking is so important. It is literally the unfair advantage. And it's not the sleazy thing. It's not like when I first met Bob, I was like, oh, let me be really nice to the recruiter so that he gets me a job one day. It's literally about getting to know people in your industry so that you're not a gray blob. So when people like Bob are looking at the CVs, it's like, oh, John Doe, Jane Doe, John Doe, Nash. Wait, Nash? Isn't that the guy from the networking event? Let's have a look at what his CV is all about. And getting your CV seen is a huge step, but it's not the final step. As a data professional, there's something that's not really talked about enough, and this actually turned into my third unfair advantage. And it actually all came about because of my old job, which was a startup, meaning that they couldn't afford to invest in people all along the data science pipeline. They couldn't afford to have a data analyst, engineer, scientist. So what that meant is they needed people who either had skills along all of these, or if they didn't have those skills, they would have to be willing to learn quickly. So this new job was interesting because they were looking for somebody who could do data engineering work and data analyst work. And and because I've become a bit of a chameleon at the old job, I was able to stick my hand up and say, yeah, I can do both of those things. So the more skills you learn along that sort of lateral data science thinking, the more jobs you become eligible for. And actually this concept of being a full stack data scientist is something that I've been keen to make a full video on for a while. So let me know if that sounds interesting to you. And before you ask, a good place to learn skills all along the data science line is DataCamp, just because they have courses on everything data related. So I'll put a link for that in the comments or the description somewhere there. I wish I could tell you it was a seamless transition from my old job to my new job, that I went into this new place and I revolutionized the way that they work, but that's not what happened. And you know I always keep it real. So I experienced the dreaded imposter syndrome and that's a whole other video for another day. So again, let me know if you want that in the comments. But one thing I would say is that I am fully settled into this new job now. I'm really enjoying it, learning loads and 
It has been quite demanding, but I've been happy with the change so far. But that's it, man. I thought I'd give you a little life update and give you a few lessons at the same time. And if you want to learn the biggest lessons that I learned from my old job, then check out this video on screen now.